started and, and just have a more talk about how to follow Jesus. So, Lord, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to to be here, to encourage each other. God, uh, think about um, the Voice of the Martyrs um, podcast I was listening to today. God, what um, our brothers and sisters in Christ, the family of, of God, or they go through on a daily basis. Um, I know that we have our own difficulties here, um, raising children and, and employers and just things that are going on. And God, but um, I just thank you for the testimony of those around the world, like Hebrews says, uh, uh, that are giving their life for you every day and uh, sacrificing so much. So we just thank you and pray, God, you'd stir our hearts tonight, open our eyes, and uh, so we can see you more clearly. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, so, so tonight we're going to be talking about um, defending the faith in the marketplace of ideas, and uh, and so it's gonna it's gonna be. Uh, great conversation. So this is a um, picture that was taken of me uh, in the marketplace. So this is Kenya, and and um, a few years ago we took a student group there, and and uh, the lady that was um, the photographer took the picture, and then she gave it to me, and I thought, there's a there's a lesson there. I'm gonna keep <laughs> keep that. But so that's what we're talking about tonight. You know, we got all these in the, in our in our life as we go through the day. We've got all these options. Um, to choose from and uh and you know you just have to and, and we make choices every day and uh so you have to ask um like our picture last week uh, a week ago was um the picture of all the the people that were on the the train in india you know and we're asking ourselves does does was what i and i don't know that people really do this i mean i I don't know that I did when I was younger, a teenager, but when I got older, I started thinking, I need to think about this, you know, Jesus is the only way, I better, I need to think about why I believe that, and, and that's where you come to. And so, like the picture object lesson last week, you know, was the, the all these people um, on the outside of a, this train, um, and they were all Indian people. And I'm guessing that the in, inside was full and uh, and so, but the, the question was, is that train able to bear the weight of all those people? It was designed, surely, for interior. the passenger interior capacity. Well, I don't know about that hundred, you know, extra thousand people hanging on the outside. And that's what we do um, when, yeah. That's what we do when we're, when we have, when we, we, I say choose, a, um, whatever worldview we're going to adopt. Um, does the worldview that I adopt, is it able to bear the weight of um, the world events that we see? I mean, and you ask, like the silence of God? Does, does what I believe, is it able to give me a, re, I mean, a, a reasonable, a coherent, because these are the words that we use, right? These are the words that we use to, to make it through the day. These are the words that we use to make the world make sense, to make our suffering make sense. Is it coherent? Is it, is it plausible? Is it reasonable? Um, is it intellectually honest? And so um, when we go through the day and we listen to people and the things that they, um, they say and they talk about, we're filtering the, the, um, our daily experiences through the objective truth, the overwhelming uh, evidence that is ultimately compelling, right? That's, that's um, everything in a nutshell what I just said in the last 90 seconds. All that thinking is ultimately uh, compelling and 
And so I, I choose, I make my choice, right? And so earlier in our lessons, I said we, we don't really choose like one guy who is a relativist. He chooses fishing or the ball game. And, and to him, because church and fishing are, are equal in value and worth, well, for, for him, we just choose church. But we're actually, we're actually compelled by the overwhelming evidence to, to the point where we, um, we have an informed faith. And, and now um, it, it's no longer a matter of uh, opinion or an option. I'm compelled because of the the overwhelming evidence I have now I have an informed faith and I'm not groping into darkness hoping to stumble upon something that's good enough or helpful for the moment or something it's it's um, actually objective objectively true and it it accurately reflects the the, the world that um, that we experience every day. That's your definition of truth. Truth is that which we experience on an everyday basis. And then we ask, um, does the Christian worldview, is it able to bear up under, um, you know, the silence of God, I got cancer, you know, now my wife's got kids, now my kid, I'm worried about my kids, and I lost my job, and, um, oh my gosh, global starvation, why does God let, you know, the, that, that those people starve? I mean, all these questions that we come up with, um, you know, we say that um, uh, it's more reasonable, it's more plausible that we're all wrong, than that we're all right. right. We can't all be right. right. And when, when you have diametrically opposed conclusions, and so we say, well, is my conclusion plausible and reasonable and coherent? And the Christian faith rises to the top there. And so we're not groping around, and we're not, um, we, we're, not uh, we're, we're actually compelled rather than an option uh, Christianity is not an option anymore. It might have been when I didn't know better. Yeah. I guess that's okay. Right. You can't unsee what you've seen. What you <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so that's what we're... Last week we talked about truth. And, and, and so um, this week uh, we're going to be talking about Defending the faith. I mean, two weeks ago was objective truth. Based on that, and now I'm going to read my Bible because I have objective truth as a foundation for my life as I'm going forward. And so tonight we're talking about defending the faith in the marketplace of ideas and um, why we can trust the Bible is one of those one of those things. So I was going to show you this picture. Of discipleship, I actually have two of them. Um, but in a sense, that's what discipleship is. I'm walking alongside, I'm the uh, I'm the shorter and the fatter of the two in this <laughs> this picture. <laughs> but that's what discipleship is. We're walking alongside somebody, helping them bear the weight of their spiritual growth. That's our responsibility to help them. And, and so, um, all right. So you have your defending the faith in the marketplace of ideas. And this, there's, uh, I don't have a video or anything tonight. We're just going to talk through this and let you uh, ask questions and say, hey, what about this? And we're just going to walk through all this because uh, there's 18 pages worth of notes here and we're going to try to cover it off um and um and see how it goes so 
Um, so defending the faith, the intent of this, this, this material is not to give you a load of ammunition um, just to beat people up with. Right? So we, we, we want to equip you and so that you can uh, um, learn to um, identify an assumption and then uh, be able to ask, ask questions. So a lot of times people think, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know the, the answer to all the people's questions. And I don't either. I ask myself a lot of questions, and the truth is, sometimes I ask questions that I can't answer. And so I start, <laughs> I start researching, I start um, Frank Turek and, and these people, I'll send them, I'll, I'll ask, I'll send them an email. Hey, I don't know, what, what do you think about this? And so, uh, so we, we want to ask questions. And, um, and so hopefully that first paragraph, that hopefully they're, They'll move toward a, a more relational, intellectually honest, compelling, plausible real position that more closely reflects reality. So I haven't used that word reality um, much uh, until uh, lately, last last few months. Um, and and that's because of Greg Kokel and following him. They got they've got the reality conferences that they have. And I'm like, well, that just makes sense. Um, because what is truth is it's, it's what we experience um, actually on our in our in our daily life reality and so put that in there um, so, so the goal is always for you uh, to become a mature believer and keep as um, keep them your, your friend um, as your friend and of course that's pre-salvation discipleship where you're just being a, being a friend um, and I don't know, but I just, I, I don't know how many Christians there really are that think evangelistically and think, you know, you know, along the lines of discipleship and, and realize that they, I mean, if we would ask them, I'm sure they would say, well, I'm witnessing to my friend. But when you clock in on time and then you do your job well and you, you know, you don't sit down and waste time, you're, that, all that is your testimony. And, and then the conversations that you're having is, is pre-salvation discipleship and so when that person does come to christ they they don't stumble over your life right they don't stumble over you know the way you've been living at work so the last paragraph there uh you're going to notice in, in the format it's simple uh, we've got the subject and then number two when they say um and they make their assertion well then number three well then you can ask this question you can say this and then, and then number four is a partial explanation. So years ago when I started teaching this at our other church in McDonough, um, the, the students would um, say, hey, Coach, uh, Coach Holloway, um, what, do I, what do I say when, um, my, when, they say, when they, my friends say this? And uh, I did my best to answer that. But I think about the third season semester that I taught this, I said, I'm going to give them a simple 101 format. When they say this, you can say this, and here's why. So they're going to make this assertion, and you can reply like this, and here's a, here's a, a solid Christian biblical explanation for why we believe um, what we believe about this subject. So, um, cool. So gentleness and respect. Mark 13, 22, Jesus said that there are going to be false messiahs and false prophets, and they're going to come to deceive. They're so clever and so good, and man, is that not true today? So like a silver tongue orator, they are so good. Uh, wordsmith is what I'm trying to say. So good at linguistics that are able to deceive even uh, the elect. You interrupt me at any time, brother. But well, I just I was going to ask you. You know, there, one thing here, just while you're on that topic, yeah. is uh, I don't know if you've seen, but there was this controversy over that uh, commercial during the Super Bowl. That yeah, he gets us. Yeah, I'm kind of curious as to where you stand on that, or if you if you thought about it at all, or if you. I have thought that. about it. I got into because I, I I'm kind of of two minds about it myself. I've got, I've got a, a, kind of a pro and con view. Mine's more con. Mm, mine is more con as well, but uh, I can see maybe a, like you said, a, a piece of it that's kind of hinting at something. Else well, I, you know, I, to, so I got into a debate online, which I uh, rarely do. 
Um, but to me, the, the mistake or what was missing in the conversation was so obvious, glaring, that I decided to comment. And so, um, um, the pro side of me uh, says, I would like to have every one of those pictures hanging in my office. Right. That's the goal is to, uh, is to serve humanity and yeah. to love your, love your neighbor. Yeah. And how many people, and this is their argument, how many people sitting on our pews don't in our churches don't do that? They judge rather than serve. Greatest among you is going to be a servant of all. And so I get their position. Um, and so I would like to have every one of those pictures. And if I had them, I'd hang them up in my, in my office. Um, when I saw the one of the priest uh, washing the feet of the gay person, um, I was thankful that I have gotten to the point, uh, thought about it long enough and hard enough, and then acted on it, that um, when Gene and I were in Puerto Rico, there was a man in our, on our hallway in our, in our uh, hotel, our apartment, um, and he was gay, but I invited him. And, and he said, well, you know, it's, I said, listen, man. Anyway, he came. And, and I was really glad that he did. And him coming and sitting at the table with all of us while we we're having Bible study and going and using our simple Bible study sheet um, was an experience for me to, to, to experience getting over my judgmentalism and my self-righteousness and to love that guy the way Jesus loves him. And so I um, had the same experience with uh, someone that I used to work with who was um, lesbian and did the same thing with her. Spent time uh, um, every, uh, every day for, for six weeks um, talking. Um, one of our conversations, um, I said, you probably, I'd like to invite you to church, but you probably wouldn't come, would you? And she said, no. And I said, you probably wouldn't come because you're going to, you're going to, you, you've already experienced, you're not going to feel welcome. She said, yeah. I said, I don't blame you. And, and so for six weeks, uh, it was a, it was a six week intermittent good conversation. And the same thing there, um, I got to push aside my, um, uh, preconceived and uh, uh, wrong notions and my feelings of I'm better than somebody than that person and and and, and so if um, we need to do that sure. whether <clears throat> whether it's their sexual orientation or the color of their skin or any other number of things and the more you do that, you, you more you, you, if you got any spiritual sense at all, it, it ought to drive you to your knees and say, God, forgive me. Um, so <clears throat> if I had, if that's, I'm trying to answer your question no, 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 thoroughly yeah. as, as possible. So the pro side and then the con side is. Yeah, so if I had those pictures that were on that Super Bowl ad, he gives us ad, I'd hang every one of them up in my office. Because they remind me, that I ought to be doing that. Sure. I ought to be serving uh, the least of these poor people, yeah. different than me, other side, living on the other side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, because who am I not to, for crying out loud? I say that I came to Christ as a sinner. Right. So why am I going to lift myself up like I'm better than, than somebody? Agreed. And so you can't keep doing that mm -hmm. and grow. And some of this, I think, is is why is the answer is the is the answer to um, why would Jesus say, "Depart from me, for I never knew you," because we're so full of our, our own self righteousness. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, but then, the, so that's the the side of the uh, he gets us ad that I like and and agree with. Um, but one other thing, um, the chat and debate thing that I got into online, um, I was only, <laughs> I was only saying, um, we ought to have the other side of the conversation, um, which is we want people to repent of their sin and, and, and that's what Jesus does. He, you, you catch a glimpse of the holiness of God in Christ and, and who Jesus is and him on the cross and the spirit of God makes you, causes you to realize I'm a sinner and that's one of my sins and I need to repent of that. Uh, and so um, uh, the other side of that um, the, uh, TV ad is the conversation that I was referring to and the people that were replying um, uh, for the most part um, we're, we're picking the the side that, that it that it um, promoted and couldn't understand that I was just saying hey there is another side to this that God forgives people and people should um, repent of their sin. I mean, when you get close to God, like Isaiah 6, woe is me. I, I, I have, I'm a man of unclean lips and I live amongst people who are unclean. So, so the, the truth, the, the dynamic that happens when you when you see, uh, come into the presence of a holy God is humility. Um, uh, undone, Isaiah said. And so <clears throat> all I was saying was we need to have that other side of the conversation. And they were, they, the people that were on the, on the chat with me weren't having it. And, and so it was very little name calling. So uh, I was glad of that. Uh, and it's hard to do online. yeah, it, it's hard to, I mean, you can't banter back and forth online like this, where I can see the expression on your face, and then you make a statement, and then I make a statement. hear the tone in your voice. You can't uh, see that. I, just, I, I think it, it came to me just because what you were saying, and then like it, it does tie in a little bit to that passage that you sent me earlier because I, I'm, I'm with you, right? The the idea is you extend the message to all, and then there will be some that accept it and some that reject it. And uh, those that reject it, uh, even Jesus, he just he let them go, right? Um, and in that passage about the, you know, there's kind of two parts in that John 6. There's the feeding of the multitudes, and then there's this whole passage where he goes to Capernaum, and the people track him down, and uh, they they... He starts talking about the bread of life, and it's you know it's a little bit uh, allegorical or metaphorical, right? He's, he's talking, you know, you're going to eat my flesh, and they're like, "What do you mean?" You know, uh, they're thinking he's talking about cannibalism, drink my blood, symbolic, right? And then uh, they he talks to him, and, and um, it says that like all of them, you know, those that had come searching for him, they heard what he had to say, and they thought it was crazy, and they left. And yeah. uh, then he turned to his 12 disciples and he's like, are you going to also leave? Right. And uh, Peter or Andrew says, like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, where, where, where are we going to go? Exactly. So, and that's, that's the, the idea. Like, you, you give the message. You wash all the feet, right? You wash the feet. But, like, you, you give the message to everyone who will hear it. And then those who are, like you said, called by God to, to turn toward him will come to you. And uh, the others, they're going to reject it, or, or you know, maybe maybe it's not their time yet. Maybe God's got a separate season for them to come to. Uh, uh, but and and so we wouldn't you agree that we want the message to be clear? Absolutely, the message has and we, to be clear. We don't want it to be one sided. No. If at all possible, we want it to be clear as clear as possible. 
and, and, the, and that's the, the, the argument with yeah, the, the... And the two sides of God are, are mercy and justice, right? There's there's the mercy for yeah. the sinner, and then there's the, the justice for the unrepentant, right? And that's, yeah. the, that, the, that's, the, that's the portion that's missing from the ad. You got all mercy... And, and, and no no, no judgment and no justice. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a problem you know, anyway. But I'm sorry. Well, have you seen no? Have you seen the the one that has been remade with the same song? No, I have. Uh, yeah, uh, like in the last couple of days. Yeah, just in the last. Uh, I guess I saw it this morning, mm -hmm. or late last night. Maybe it was the first time. Late last night I saw it because I showed it to Gina, um, and so it's the same song. And uh, same format as far as the graphics. And on the one side it says, uh, a former jihadist, got a picture of a guy with his gun. And then over here on the other side, he's got a picture of him smiling and, um, and he's not, a, it's, he's former. Mm. You know, like, like I think it's Ephesians that says, so were such, some of you, right. such were some of you. You used to be. But you're not anymore because God is has saved you. Once I was enemy of God and now I'm son. Yeah, friend of God. And and so you're growing and so one is uh, I think a porn star at which <laughs> like those are opposing uh ideas. But anyway, a porn person and then uh, now this girl's married with a little baby, former porn, former jihadist, former thief. You know, former, and, and it's like five or six or not, maybe nine, I don't know, seven um, pictures. Former this, former that. And, and, and I'm like, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, for anybody who, who, um, kind of what you said earlier, there's a reason Jesus said those who are of the truth are going to come to the light. And so we share. All of God, you'll come with me, and if you don't, then you're not going to. And we're going to keep praying for him. That's right. But we're not going to we're not going to bow the knee to um, another one was transgender person, yeah. tra former transgender. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to capitulate and bow the the knee to um, to give in to to sin. I mean, any person who's actually growing is not going to want to make an excuse for their sin because they look at the body of Christ on the, on the cross. And, the, and you're not going to want to embrace the very thing that, that Christ died for. Well, I, I think I heard um, someone put it one time to me that, um, you know, Christ serves as the ideal. Right, he, he he was perfect. He is he is the ideal. He's the ideal, yeah. And by necessity, the ideal always stands in in judgment against you because you could never possibly be right. Like from your first sin on, you will never measure up to the ideal. And right. So the ideal, it, it just is a judge by its own like nature. It, it you know you look at it and you feel the judgment, not not because he's judging you necessarily, but because I, I see where I am falling short in comparison to that ideal. Um, and so I think that's kind of what you're... Yeah, I mean, and, and, and so that's like in Revelation um, when um, it's in 4, 5, and 6, I think it is, it says that the angels flew around the throne of God and with six wings they flew, with, with uh, two they flew, with two they covered their feet, and with two they covered their eyes. Right? The two covering their feet is like Moses. Right? Take off your shoes because you're walking on, on ho you're, you're standing on holy ground in front of the presence of God at the bush. And so these angels flew with, with they had six wings and with two of them, they were smart enough to cover their feet because they knew they were in the presence of holiness. And with two of them, they, they covered their eyes. And, and, and they, you know, we got Isaiah, uh, um, Realizing that, you know, he was in the presence of God, and and the platoon of uh, soldiers, Jesus picked up the ear of the man of the soldier, put it back on his. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I'm just like, 
man, that's so cool. You know, he picked up the man's ear and put it on the back on the side of his head and phew, it displayed his glory and the whole pl pl platorian, the pl whole platoon fell. Right? That's what it says. Because they were going to take him to his death. You know? They fell on the ground because of the glory of God revealed in that split second mm -hmm. through Christ. And then when Christ rose from the dead, Matthew 28, the graves burst. Can you imagine some teenage boys playing in the graveyard? And, and so anytime, in the disciples, when the disciples out on the Sea of Galilee and and uh, um, he calmed the storm. And the, and the conclusion statement says, and they were afraid. They were afraid. Who is this man? I think crushed. I, this is a good place for us to find ourselves. This is a good place f f for the people who are promoting that ad to find themselves crushed under the, the weight of the glory of God. Not just as, you know, he loves us, his, but his majesty. And um, that's a good place to find yourself where your breath is taken away because he, let, he peels back the, the uh, curtain for just a moment and lets you boop, get a little glimpse. 100%. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good thing to be uh, terrified by God. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I derailed this. No, that's good, man. We were talking about it. See, that, so, so this is what we this is what discipleship is. We have we have an intentional um, plan, a track that we're going down. And you will, too, in, in your discipleship. You have a, a track that you want to follow that takes your disciple to a certain place. And as a discipler, you keep that in mind. And so you've got the, the technical, the theological stuff, you know, that you do, and you do it intentionally and on purpose, and you have a, a time frame in mind and those kind of um, logistical things. But when your disciple, you know, comes and says to the, to your you know your meeting and says this is what this is what I went through this week and then all that stuff goes aside for that meeting and in the in um, that conversation you're dropping in the truth from God's word making it a part of the conversation you didn't get to go down the track of of um, you know curriculum that you might have wanted to but you still, you, you, you know, bringing in the truth of God's word while you're helping that guy, um, giving him some hope that somebody really cares, life's not over, and, and then next time you, maybe you can go. So this is, we, we didn't, this is good. <laughs> and then I'm telling you what that um, the uh, Super Bowl ad needs to be talked about. And, and when you when you it's important. huh? It's important to get the uh, like you said. The, it's almost as bad to tell a half truth as it is to tell a lie, right? Like to yeah. to all, to intentionally obscure that, that second half that you're talking about. You know, that's it's not the same as lying outright to people. Uh, but you, you're not, what, what do they call it, the full counsel of God, right? you you got to take the whole picture into account, not just the part that you like. Uh, right. Not the love your neighbor, neighbor part. It's, you know, love your neighbor, love, love God. Right? There, there's two parts right. of that. And the right. first part is love love God, which is the surrender part. Yeah. And, and then through that, you can love your neighbor because, because you realize what you are, you know. Um, and it becomes more and more evident. Um, now at 63 years old, <laughs> all everything we're saying, it just becomes more and more evident. Um, the older I get, um, the more you see clearly. Uh, it, I think if you keep humility and objectivity, um, 
and of course God's word. You know, if you keep those things as a filter, um, I think that's you are able to see more clearly. Um, that's that's what's wrong with the, these. I, I say arrogant, but they are. I mean, I, these arrogant um, rock star preachers. Uh, um, they're smart. They got intellect. Um, and it even looks like they have the power of God on them because they got 10,000 people in the church. All right. Charismatic. Charismatic personality. Able even to deceive even the elect. That's right. So. So that's good. Um, so when we hear that other, that new ad that I told you about that they've come up with in the last uh, um, 24 hours, you, 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 go, you look at it and you go, of course, of course, a former sex addict, former pornoc, former jihadist, former thief. That's what Jesus does. Um, and you wonder why, like in my case, with this thread I was on, why don't they even want to consider having a conversation about the other side of the coin? They don't even want to consider having a conversation about this thing that has become so obvious with this new ad. They confuse conviction. If I, if I say this is not the right way, you know, that somehow you've condemned me, now you're, now you're judging me, now you've condemned me. But it's, All right. I don't know, it's, it's a very tough uh, thing to get across to people sometimes that, uh, that saying tough things out of love may sound harsh at first, but it, it is, you know, I wouldn't be a good father if I let my kid, you know, cuss me out. <laughs> I, I, if I, or carry I, around a boiling pot of water. All right, that, Correction is not condemnation, right? It, it, it's not, I hate you. It's not, uh, it's not coming from a place of, uh, but let me say, it is coming from a place of love. It's not coming from a place of hatred, right? When I say to you that, you know, whatever behavior is, is uh, not in alignment with God's word, that that's not, it's not because I hate you or think that you're bad, right? I think that I'm bad. <laughs> uh, they have weaponized mercy. That's right. Well, well I, you know, and this is a, this is personal to me because um, my own brother is, uh, I, you know, there are some people that believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. I don't think I'm one of those people. I don't believe that. I think you can, can lose your salvation. I think you can um, come to God and then run away from Him. You know, and I think if you run hard enough or long enough that. You know, you can, it's proof. Right. And so my, my brother's in that situation. He, uh, there was a time where he was attending church regularly, and we were only 13 months separated. So uh, he, he, believe, he knows what I know. You know, we went to the same church growing up. My, my folks raised us the exact same way. Um, but lately, he's, he, he kind of mocks me for being a believer. Um, huh. It's easy. But, and From talks, a worldly perspective, right? And he talks to me about you know when, when I when I approached him with it, um, you know, he he just kind of like, well, you know, you think you're so much better than me. You think, and and I I told him I was like, that's actually not what I think at all. Like because I know my own heart, I, I actually know that I'm worse than you. <laughs> you know, and, and or maybe we're the same level of of evil, right? Like every desire of our hearts are. And uh, it is only by, you know, I, I don't think I'm good, you know, and you are projecting this on me. <laughs> like, I've never said that to you. I've never claimed that I was better than you. Like, this is all a, a fiction in your head because you're feeling that, like, you know, the condemnation the, or the conviction. And guilt or exactly. something, yeah. And shame. And so now you're projecting that back on me, saying that I, I think I'm better than you. 
I think what you're saying is like you think that I'm better than you, and that's not what <laughs> that's not really where we're. All right, at. all right. But so that it's it is kind of um, it's kind of personal. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, any any, um, any person who sees that second ad, um, I, I, and I think has has a um, a desire to to know the truth, to to know God. Is going to pause, and they're going to uh, they're going to say, "Ah, there it is. That makes sense to me. It's former thing. It's former that. Former. It makes it makes sense to uh, to one who is either saved or uh, seeking um, as best they know how and can objective truth." Um, so, good stuff. So, um, so this gentleness and respect, um, uh, there on page, page two, um, you're, uh, in the middle, first Peter three fifteen. let's see, um, Oh, 2 Timothy 3.16, but you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. All right? And so we're choosing to choose Jesus again. This is the conversation. This is part of the conversation I have more than any other conversation. Because we have laid the foundation of objective truth for the Christian life, for the Christian worldview, now I can read my Bible and I have compelling reasons to believe it, which are in this today's lesson, and, and I have compelling reason to believe the Christian worldview is objectively true because of that. These are the things that, that guide our, our thinking. I'm going to choose again. Fall down six times, get up, say, I'm going to choose to choose Jesus again because of the overwhelming evidence and the, and the, the overwhelming hope that comes with uh, the Christian worldview. And so I'm choosing to choose, to choose Jesus because I know just enough. I got, I got a few questions, but I know just enough to keep choosing him and I'm not groping in, in the darkness. So uh, the scripture is inspired by God. It, it, it is inspirational, but it's not inspirational like, like a poem is inspirational or a sunshine is inspirational. You know, it can encourage you for a little bit. It's inspired by God. God breathed these are the these and these other things we're going to talk about are the the things that are a, a theological uh, foundation a bedrock that we don't move on my daughter uh, went to liberty university and before she left um you know we had so many spiritual conversations and one of them um you know, I said, I said, well, you know, you better get your theology right. Because we were having a, I don't remember the subject. I don't remember what we were talking about. But we were talking about a theological issue. And I said, well, we as Christians, right, we, we better get our theology right. Because when you get that right, it makes everything else make sense. And uh, so she texted me after she was up, up at... Um, Liberty for, I don't know, a year or something. She was up there and she texted me and said, Hey, Daddy, my professor said, You better get your theology right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's what we, what we want to do. We choose to choose because we have this overwhelming and compelling uh, evidence to keep choosing God, even though there's something I don't understand. And we're, the truth is we do that in, in every area of our life. I don't know what the streets are going to be like, but I'm choosing to choose that if I stay in this lane, everybody over there is going to stay in their lane. I mean, that, that's real simple, but it's, that's how we live. 1 Peter 3.15, worship Christ um, as, as Lord of, of your life. And then wh why do we do this? 2 Timothy 4, verse 3 and 4, because a time is coming, and my word is it here today, when people are no longer 
going to even want to have a conversation. And what, like the thread I was on the other night, they're not going to listen to, to sound teaching. And so remember, Remain faith. Obedience to, to the Word of God strengthens you. This is the thing that I've learned um, uh, in my latter years. The, the more you obey, the stronger you become. The more you feed. I mean, like I, I heard years ago, you know, which, you, you got two dogs fighting inside you. Whichever one you feed is the one that's going to win. And I was like, okay, well, I, I get that kind of. But now I'm older, I'm like, well, there's a lot of truth to that, man. Um, so the more you, like Philemon 1.6 says, I don't know if I have it in there, but Philemon 1.6 says, I pray you be active in sharing your faith so that you will know. There's this transitional phrase, so that. So I pray you'll be active in sharing your faith. If you do that, so that you'll know all that you have in Christ. And so there's this um, progression that happens when you obey. And, and what that is, is strengthening your um your resolve and it's opening your eyes as you obey your eyes are opened this is a, this is part of the debriefing that i give the guys on the wrestling team after they've led a fca devotion is galatians 2 20 i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live and yet not i but christ is living his life through me he's loving people through me look what god has done in you so uh, remember, uh, remain faithful. Psalm 119 and Romans 8. Obedience to the Word of God strengthens you, and the more you obey, the more spiritually strong uh, you become. Okay? And then over on the other page, page 3, um, clothe yourself with humility. Man, the, the Holy Spirit uses, uses that, uses humility. Um, and they're going to embellish in that next paragraph. They're going to embellish the scriptures, take it out of context. And we, we, want to, we want to be good stewards of God's word and not do that. We want to purposefully not do that. And so our goal there in the middle of the page is to be, is to be a mature, responsible person who is, who is um, first following Jesus and defending the faith. And then the bold type there, you're, and remember, always remember you're answering a person, not a, not a question. And so to do that, here are a few questions that will put you in the driver's seat. This is Greg Kokel stuff. Driver's seat of your conversation is to move you forward towards um, personal belief. So you can ask, how do you, how do you know that? Um, or how do you, how do you come to, to find that out? What do you mean by that? Can, can you explain uh, that a little further for me? Uh, why, what do you mean by God? What do you mean by your truth? What do you mean by a good person? What are, your, what are your sources, and how, how do you know that they're uh, trustworthy? Um, I don't know if this is in here, but also how close are they in relationship in, in, in time to the actual events? Because that's a question we ask about the New Testament, uh, the Gospels, and, and the rest of the New Testament. What are their sources, and how close uh, were they written to the actual events? And we're going to talk about that more um, and so this lesson, this um, lesson tonight is really about learning how to uh, ask questions. Um, it, when you ask questions, it makes you think about what you believe, um, but it helps you um, uh, move along in the conversation and, and you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to feel compelled to answer all their questions. Let's finish page four. And uh, what time do the children get out? Uh, like 10 minutes. Okay, so, we, seven. so we've probably got five or 10 more minutes? Yeah. Okay, let's see what we can do. Um, so remember, um, th this, is, this is a great relief right here in the middle. The burden of proof is on them, right? So when people make an assertion, uh, like there's no such thing as ultimate truth, right. um, the burden of proof is on them to give a, a sensible, a reasonable, plausible explanation for what they believe. Um, God will let all people go to heaven because he loves all people. Okay, well, how do you know that? Until so you start ask, asking questions. Then that last paragraph, just because our culture is confused doesn't mean that, that we are. All right? If you take the human condition out of um, the conversation of what's wrong with our culture, what's wrong, 
like R.C. Sproul. What's wrong with you people? Isn't that what he says? What's wrong with you people? What's wrong with you people? Uh, if you take the human condition out of the conversation, like rape, theft, you know, Ponzi schemes, it, all, it, all kinds of injustice, if you take the human condition of de the, the, the depravity of men, sinfulness of men, if you take that out, you're going to be squirming around to find an answer that's not going to be sufficient to answer, to fully answer the question of why rape, why theft, why all this stuff. But when you insert and include the depravity of man as part of that conversation, I mean, I hate to say it's easy, but it's easy to answer the question. Why rape? Well, men are sinful. Why theft? Men are sinful. Um, so, in, I found in our conversation, and especially in our culture today, people don't want to say that they're bad. People, do, I mean, they want to say, broken is a really common word, and I'm like, it, it just doesn't go far enough. Kind of like the, the ad, the TV ad. It doesn't go far. Just to say that you're broken doesn't go far enough. But, I mean, okay, we'll, I, we'll start there, I guess. Sure. But would you, let, let's think about going a little bit further. You, you're worse than broken. Broken, you push a glue on it. Our condition is, is far worse than just broken. Um, so, did you have something? No, no. Okay, on page five, now we start with this format that we had earlier. When they say this, here are some things that you can say, and here's uh, an explanation for that on relativism. All right? And then on, the, on world religions. When they say all religions are the same and they all lead to God, well then you can ask this question or you can say this, you can make this statement, and here's an explanation. So remember, this was written, uh, I've updated it, but it, initially the format started for high school kids. But it's real helpful for us adults who need, um, I, I hear these things all the time. When they say this, what can I say? Well, I can say this. And then I can back, in my mind, I know that I've, I've been uh, taught, I have a, a compelling explanation for why I can believe the, the Christian worldview. So um, I brought this article um, about uh, Jesus because the next section is God and Jesus and that's a really good little article to read um, the next session uh, on page 7 when they say Jesus was only a good man and, and a good teacher at best he, he was not God nor was he a savior well then you can say or ask well how, how could Jesus be a good man if he lied Shortcomings exposed after he died. This was where, like, Rami Zacharias used to say something like, he was either a liar, lunatic, lunatic or lord, right? He was either a liar, he was crazy, or he was God. And yeah. Kind of your three choices there. So. Yeah, and um, and it, so the explanation is Jesus was wrong, then he, then he wasn't uh, God, nor was he good, because he, he lied and he misled people. Right, exactly. And so we have this... Um, uh, uh, coherent explanation uh, and then I'll give you some more things down there I mentioned the swamis and the and Jesus that Jesus was a Jew he was a theist and how do we know that um, we, because we we read uh, his teachings <laughs> and so there's explanations there um, for you and next page page nine is a, a chart on the left is is there is a God on the right? There, there is no God. So if there is a God, well then, um, uh, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna follow His law. I need to do what pleases Him. Uh, I'm gonna submit to Him. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not uh, an accident because there is a God. I can, I cannot uh, make excuses because um, I'm accountable to Him. I'm not gonna blame others. But then, if there is no God, um, oh my word. Just look at the news today. Look at our world today. There, there is no truth. I, I submit to nobody. I, I, I get, uh, they, people get what they deserve. Might makes right. You know, survival of the fittest. Um, man is an evolutionary um, accident. So there's a chart there kind of form you thinking and inform and help. You know, there is truth. There is God and there is truth or there is no God which means there is no objective truth. These statements on the back 
um, by Adrian Rogers um, are really good to help form your thinking. It's better to be divided by the truth than to be united in error. Have you ever heard these? Uh, I've heard that one. Uh, it's better to speak the truth that hurts. We yeah, and then heals than to tell a lie that comforts, but ultimately it kills. Number three, it's better to be hated for telling the truth than to be loved for telling a lie. So that statement assumes the, the, um, the, the nobility of truth, you know, the higher calling of, of truth. Um, so it's better to be hated for telling the truth than to be loved for, for telling a lie. Number four, it's better to stand alone for the truth than with the multitudes in error. My gosh. And the last one is better to ultimately succeed with the truth than to temporarily succeed with a lie. Mm.